Hey there. Thanks for joining this class. This is history class and uh, um, Bola Olubi, your history teacher. And uh, what we are looking at today is your, uh, the Benin cultures and history. And already um, here you can see the Benin city wall. Uh, you can see the Benin city at a glance. You can also see the map of Nigeria um, showing the location of Benin city. That is in case you are asked to draw the map of Nigeria locating the Benin city this shouldn't be very difficult for you to do and here as well you can also see the map of uh, Edo State showing the Benin city here in this uh, uh, map okay uh, and then okay now that's just my information about all of you okay your, your tutorial and you can see the map of uh, Edo State showing the Benin city here and this is uh, the Benin city at a glance you can see that they have just shown you before and in case you're asked to draw the map of Nigeria uh, showing the location of uh, Benin city here you will see it here yeah, and uh, okay now let's start by taking the uh, meaning of uh, Benin city and a short uh, explanation on uh, the Benin city uh, you can see in the note in front of you here the capital and the largest city of Edo State in southern Nigeria, situated approximately 40 kilometers north of the Benin River and 220 kilometers by road east of Lagos. Benin City is the center of Nigeria's rubber industry and oil production, which is also very, uh, a very significant uh, industry. So you can just read more that, and in case you are asked to, the fine will be give a very short explanation about the Benin City. Here is that because for our time, you can just take your time to enjoy the note. And here is the Benin City Wall, which is a, a very good historical site that uh, you can be asked to visit so that you understand uh, properly uh, how the place really looks like. Okay, I'm sure you are uh, uh, enjoying uh, the area. Okay, and uh, very quickly now. Let's proceed uh, to, okay, I've just shown you the Benin city. Okay, now let's uh, go to the Edo people, the Edo people. Uh, the original people are founders of the Edo uh, Empire, and Edo people initially were ruled by the Oguso king. You remember in the, one of the classes I took it, I'm trying to explain to you the difference between the Oguso dynasty and the Eweka dynasty. So the meaning of this Oguso means kings of the sky, and we we'll call their land Igodo, Migodo. Okay, uh, and the first to give so well that much influence and get popularity as a good ruler. They died after a long reign and was succeeded by Ere, his eldest son. And in the 12th century, great uh, palace uh, intrigue and the battle for power erupted between the warrior uh, crown prince. Uh, Ekala Dehan, and as the son of the last uh, Ogizo and his younger uh, partner uncle. So you see, th this history line you can just take your time to go down this 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 line. But uh, this Ekala Dehan ap actually happened to be this, the uh, son of the last Ogizo, okay, son of the last Ogizo, uh, and his young partner uncle. So in an anger over an Horako, that was at that time there was a, a, a talk of war as to who to become the head and. Uh, the, the king at that time, and then we see this prince Kala the Hen who left the royal court with his warriors. And when his old father, the Ogiso, died, the Ogiso dynasty was ended. And as the people and the royal king Mika prefer their king's son as natural next in line to the rule. So the exile, so this time, this guy eventually got exiled, okay. And uh, at, that, at that time, he wasn't known, and then later he gained the title of the Oni Ileife. So uh, Izudua, which has been corrected in Yoruba language to Oni Ogene to uh, Ilefe Odudua. I refused to return to Edo, but sent uh, his son Oromiyo to become king in his place. Okay, now this Prince Oromiyo, whom he sent in his place, now took up residence in the palace. Uh, so Prince Oromiyo took up a residence in the palace, built for him at Uzama by the elders and now coronation shrine. And uh, soon after, he married a beautiful lady, Erin Wide, daughter of uh, Osanego, the knight uh, Enugi of Edo. He and Erin Wide had a son. After some years, he called the meeting of the people and renounced his office, remarking that the country was a land of vexation in Lebino. Okay, and that uh, only a child born, a trained, and educated in the heart and mysteries of the land could reign over the people. Huh. That's serious. Now, so you see now, so the country afterward was known by this name, and he calls uh, his son born to him. By Erin we did to be made king in his place and return to Yoruba land in Lefe. And after some years, left Oyo and we also left his son behind 
now upon leaving his son at Jakar immediately became the first alavion for your the present line and the while Oromion the elder prince Kaladehan also known as uh, Isudu himself was training as uh, the army of uh, Ife okay and now I see that is more to the story there and uh, I'm sure you can uh, uh, study that up to this uh, Eware, yes, this Eware of the thing, and around the 1470, Eware changed the name of the state to Edo, and this was about the time the people of Pepe migrated from the next city. Alternatively, uh, Yoruba, as I believe Odudua was, uh, was from the Middle East and migrated from that area to the present Ile Ife. And because of his power and military might, he was able to conquer the enemies invading Ife City, and uh, uh, that was why the people of Ile Ife made him the king or owner of uh, Ife City. In any case, it is agreed upon by both the Yoruba and Edos that Odudua sent his son, Prince Oramino, over to rule Benin City and found the Oba dynasty in Benin City. Well, that is that. And now let's proceed to the artifact of Benin City. The artifact uh, of uh, Benin City. Okay, the artifact of Benin City. Now, here we can see the artifact of Benin City. Okay, here you can see the artifact of Benin City. Here is the Benin bronze. You can see that. And uh, here is the plaque. Okay, showing court attendants. And you can also see the Benin, uh, the Benin uh, Bruins. You see the Benin Bruins here. Uh, yes, there's the Benin Bruins and the head of Queen Idia. And uh, you can also see the Benin, another set of Benin Bruins here. And uh, here you can see the plague showing crocodile. Plague showing crocodile. So the other people are known for casting objects in bronze and brass, hard to work in wood, ivory, and terracotta. The Queen Mother head, um, made from ivory and used as first text symbol in 1977, was made by Benin craftsmen. And a Benin artifact included the memorial head and the king's horn blowers and many plagues. And they were produced for the kings and were used for decorating. European contact, well, you can read uh, to the history of how the European came in contact uh, with the Benin in 1485. You can take your time there and study the line, okay? And of course, you still remember the European contact with Nigeria. Yes, this is, uh, I think, one of the topics we have treated before. The early European contact with Nigeria, we talk about the, uh, how the, uh, the early... Uh, missionaries came in contact, how the early explorers came in contact, and how the early traders and merchants. And you still remember very vividly the examples of those explorers, Mango Park, uh, Clapperton, and then the ex um, uh, traders, John Holtz, and uh, Topman Goldie, I mentioned them. So you can take your time to read through the, uh, okay, the, um, the European contact. And now the Nigerian independence. What exactly can we remember here? The following Nigeria's independence from British rule in 1960, Benin City became the capital of Midwestern region when the region was split from Western region in June 1963. As at this very time we are talking about, Nigeria was in four political regions: the northern region, the capital at uh, uh, Kaduna, the western region, the capital in Ibadan, and the midwestern region. It was then made Benin, the later independent state in 1976, and then the eastern region where Enugu was made the capital. You still remember all that, okay? Uh, this is just talking about Benin, the place that Benin played and the role it played during this time, okay? And became the state capital of Edo State when Benin was split into Delta and Edo State in 1991. And the Benin imperialism started in the last decade of the 13th century by Oba Ewedo. Okay, the education. Here are the schools we can find in Benin City. Okay, they are there. They are well listed there. More to do schools and the culture of Benin. Yes, attraction in the city include the National Museum, the Oba Palace, Eagle Streets, and uh, okay, you can see those. And the Benins are known for bronze sculpture, its casting skills, and their heart and craft. Benin City is also the home of uh, it's also the home of one of the oldest sustained monarchies in the world. Various festivals are held in Benin City. Yearly to celebrate various historic occasions and seasons. Igwe Festival, which you remember, uh, remember I made mention on that historical site in Nigeria. Okay, and uh, it is celebrated at a time between Christmas and New Year. Then we also talk about the market in Benin City, which include Ekeoba, Ekenaka, Agbado, and Eken. Significance, yes, here is the class of uh, Benin culture that's in case you are asked to mention, this is what you say. Okay, now here is your assignment and make sure you do that in case you have any question, uh, remember to send them straight to me via my WhatsApp line or you 
uh, at the same time you can use my mail medium number one explain the location of Benin on the map of nigeria number two write a short note on the Benin culture and history number three describe Benin artifact number four discuss the occupation activities of the Benin people number five state the three significance of Benin the Edo culture in nigerian history okay and that brings us to the end of the class so i'm sure you really enjoyed the class so i'll be waiting for your assignment at any time and make sure you play safe okay don't be troublesome at home god bless you